The first thing you'll need to do when you're working with QuickBooks is go ahead and set up what's called your company file. Each file that you set up in QuickBooks is called a company. You can have as many companies as you would like. For example, a lot of times I see small business owners that will actually have a company file set up for their actual company and they'll have a separate one set up for their personal information. It might be that you're a bookkeeper and you'd like to have a separate file for each of your customers. Any way you'd like to set it up, you can have as many company files in QuickBooks as you would like. They do not talk to each other, so don't worry about mixing information. And you can only have one company file open at any given time. The first thing you have to do is set up that company file, and that's what I want to do with you here in this first section. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks, and I will show you how to go ahead and get that company file set up. When you first open QuickBooks, you're going to see the screen that says No Company Open. If you actually had previously opened some company files, you would see them listed here. If you didn't see one that you know is in your computer and you'd like to open it, you can open it a couple of ways. You can go to Open here, or you can use this Open or Restore option right here, which will allow you to search your computer for that particular file. The Restore option just basically means that if you had a backup copy you needed to restore to QuickBooks for some reason, you could get to it through this option here. You also can find a company file over here, and this is a new feature in the 2020 version. You would actually just type in the name of your company file you were searching for here, and then choose Open, and it would search for you, and it would find it in this list, and you could double-click on it. Notice it will search your local drives, meaning your hard drive on your computer, for example. It would actually search any removable media, which would be if you had a flash drive, for example, or if you're on a network and you want to search there, you can do that. I'm just going to hit cancel right now, and that's going to take me back to the No Company Open window. You also have these sample files right here that we'll talk about a little bit later. These are basically a product-based business and a service-based business. If you don't know how to set something up or you're not really sure if what you did is correct, open one of these sample files and see how they did it. Because this is the very first time, we're going to have to go through a process of creating our new company file, and that's this option right here. Once I click on this, it's going to take me into the Easy Step interview. And the first thing it asks you is, do you want to set up your business? And you can use the Start Setup option here. Or you can go down here to other options and choose to actually do the advanced setup. I'm going to stop right here because I want to go into section two where we actually start going through this easy step interview as it's called. Matter of fact, I'll click on the advanced setup and that'll launch me into the easy step interview. We saw in section one of this module, which is module two, getting started, how to actually get started setting up your company file. Now we have to go through what's called the Easy Step Interview and go ahead and fill out all the information QuickBooks would need to get your company file mostly set up. We're going to be going through this interview and it's going to take a few moments, but you want to make sure that you have a couple things handy. You want to make sure that you have information about your company, like the company name, address. You might need to use the company federal ID if you happen to have one. So just have those things handy so that we can answer these questions as we go through this interview. There is a part two to this particular section, so make sure you watch both parts so that you have the whole interview section down pat. The Easy Step interview will take you a few minutes to get through, so don't be in a rush, but you'll be glad you did it when you're done because you'll have all the information filled in. You'll notice on this first screen here that it's asking you to put in information about your company. This is basic information like the company name, the company address, things like that. The tax ID number is not really necessary. The only reason you would actually need it would be if you happen to use the Intuit payroll service, they're going to ask you to have that in here so that you can use it for payroll. But other than that, you're not really going to need this. Let's say this company we're working with is ABC Plumbing. I'm going to go ahead and put in their address, which is Coatesville. I'm sure I spelled that right. And this is going to be in Pennsylvania. We'll go down and pick PA. And then the zip here will be 19320. You can also put in a phone number and a fax, an email, and a web address. 
You will want to fill those in because when you go to send correspondence to either customers or vendors, for example, QuickBooks will pull this information. I'm going to click Next at the bottom, and the next screen asks me to select my industry. Now you'll notice there are many different industries in here. There's automotive, there's construction. If you get on the list, you'll see there's a nonprofit. Pick one that's close to what you do. It does not have to be exact, and there's really no wrong answer here. At the very bottom of the list, if you're still not sure what to do, there's a general product or service-based business, and you can choose one of those. I'll just choose the general product-based business and click Next. This screen asks, how is your company organized? Now, don't get hung up on this screen. As a matter of fact, if you have an accountant that does your taxes, and I always suggest that with a business, you never do your own taxes, I want you to pick other or none. The only reason this option is here is because a lot of times a business may decide to use a software program like TurboTax, for example, to do their taxes. And if that's the case, then TurboTax has to look at QuickBooks and pull information onto certain lines on the tax form. That's why it asks you, how's your company organized? Now, here's the thing. If you choose one of these options, every screen that you go to will have an extra question, which will ask you, which line on the tax form do you want to pull this onto? And you're not going to know because you're not an accountant. If you just don't have that option in here, you won't have to worry about it. So I suggest everyone choose other or none and click next. Now it asks me to select the first month of my fiscal year. I'm going to leave it on January, but of course, if yours is different, you could change that. I'm going to hit next one more time, and it's going to talk to me about setting up the administrator password. I do want to spend a little bit of time on this because it's very important that you set up usernames and passwords for each person that's using your QuickBooks company file. QuickBooks doesn't make you do this, it's just highly suggested. What this means is that when you open your company file each time, the user will have to put in their username and their password. Right now it's asking you about setting up the administrator password, which would be yourself since you're setting up the company file. I'm going to go ahead and put a password in here. And remember that a good password will be any combination of letters, numbers, special characters. It is case sensitive, so you'll want to remember this password. We'll talk in a later module more about setting up passwords. I'm going to click next at the bottom, and now it says create your company file. This is like the save screen. You'll want to go ahead and actually choose a place to save your company file. And once you do, you'll notice it'll start creating your company file in the background here. You'll start seeing your icons appear over here, and it'll have your company name at the top, like you see ABC Plumbing Now and that sort of thing. Give it just a couple seconds and it will be done. Once your company file has been created, that means that if you get out of this at any time by hitting this leave, you can come back in and set up your options again. You can't get back into the Easy Step interview, but I'm going to show you as we go along how you would go in and change all of these options. But let's go ahead and continue customizing this for your business. I'm going to click Next. And the first thing it asks is, what do you sell? Your choices are services, products, or both. Again, there's no wrong answer here. If currently you sell services, but maybe you add products later on, you can always go and turn those options on. If you're not sure, you can just hit both right here, and that way you'll have all of the options on your home screen. And really all you're doing when you answer these questions is turning on the options on your home screen. As we go through here, if you have different screens than I do, it's because of how you answered the previous questions. So there's nothing wrong with it. Just kind of hold tight till I get to where you are or vice versa. I'm going to hit next at the bottom. And because I said I sell products, it asked me, would I like to charge sales tax? We'll talk about sales tax in a later module as well, but I'll just say yes and turn it on for now. And now it's asking, would I like to create estimates in QuickBooks? Think of estimates as quotes for a job. Construction is a great example because they estimate jobs. If you're using this feature, you go ahead and say yes. And the next thing asks if I'd like to use statements in QuickBooks. Businesses who use statements will actually send a statement at the end of every month, and it's basically a summary of everything that happened during the month. It will have at the top how much the customer owed you from the prior month, 
then it will list any payments or any invoices and then what the customer owes you now. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on yes and click on next. This next screen asks about using progress invoicing. Now if I were setting up QuickBooks, I would have put this question right behind the estimate question because here's what this means. If you estimate jobs for customers, then you have the ability to pull information from those estimates into an actual invoice so that you can get paid. You can actually invoice your customer progressively. You might invoice them for certain items that were on the estimate. You might invoice them for a percentage of the estimate. And when you're finished, then QuickBooks will know and it will not ask you again if you want to invoice any more from that estimate because it's all been pulled in. If you are estimating jobs, you will want to use progress invoicing. I'm going to click Next, and now it asks about managing the bills that I owe. Bills come in the mail that have to be paid. A lot of people will have a little basket on their desk, and when the bills are ready to be paid, they'll just go through and pick out the ones that they want to write a check for. You should put all of your bills in QuickBooks, and that way you can run reports at any time to see who you owe, how much money you owe, if it's over 30 days, things like that. Think about, too, if you're going to the bank to get a loan for your business, they're going to want to see if you have any accounts payable is the term, or any bills that you owe. So make sure you put any bills or any expenses for the company that are coming up in QuickBooks so that you have accurate reporting. I'm going to click Next, and now it asks me about tracking inventory in QuickBooks. I want to go ahead and stop the video right here because there is a second part, and we'll just pick up where we left off right here. I'll see you shortly over in part two. We are working on going through the Easy Step interview to go ahead and set up our company file. Let's go ahead and keep on going. This is part two of section two using the Easy Step interview. Okay, when we left off, we were on this screen where QuickBooks is asking if we want to track inventory. Now let me just tell you a little bit about what the word inventory means. If you sell physical products in your store, for example, and you track the fact that you have six in the back room and you'd like QuickBooks to let you know that you have two left so you can order some more, that's an example of true inventory. Sometimes businesses sell products, but they don't track how many they have in the back. They might just order a few as the customers request them. That's what we consider non-inventory, when you don't want to track how many you have. All you have to do here if you want to track inventory is just say yes and then click next. This screen asks about tracking time in QuickBooks and there are a couple ways you can use the time feature. One of the ways is if you do job costing in your business and a common question is what is job costing and how do I actually do this? Well job costing basically means that if you work on different jobs or projects you want to know all of the costs involved in working on that particular project or job and part of that is the time that you or your employees or subcontractors might spend working on that job or project. You can track that time in QuickBooks. The second way you can use it is let's say you're in a business where you bill your customers by the time you spend. Maybe like an attorney for example he might track all the time during the month when he talks to you on the phone and at the end of the month he might send you an invoice or a bill for that. So there's a couple different ways you can use that time tracking. I suggest that you do turn that on. The next question says, do you have employees? Now, I find this question very misleading right here. Employees are people that you actually give a paycheck to and you deduct taxes from them. If you have subcontractors that work for you, they are not employees. They have nothing to do with payroll, absolutely nothing. They're considered vendors in QuickBooks. The way they should be handled is they should always send you a bill and you pay that bill. Do not try to use subcontractors as employees to save on taxes because at some point you will get in trouble for doing that. You need to either have employees or have 1099 contractors that work for you. They're considered 1099 contractors if they dictate their own schedule. If you dictate their schedule, where they have to be, what time, then they need to be set up on payroll. I would go ahead and say yes here, and you can check whichever ones you want. Right now, we're just turning on an icon so that we can do payroll, 
or if we have 1099 contractors in the future, we can pay them. I'm going to click Next, and it asks about using accounts in QuickBooks. I'll click Next once more, and now it asks about selecting a date to start tracking the finances. You get to decide which date you'd like to start with in QuickBooks. It just has to have a date to start with. You can actually start with the beginning of your fiscal year, or you can use today's date or set a particular date that you'd like to start with. If you're just getting into QuickBooks towards the end of the year, and you're really wanting to start fresh next year, then you don't really need to go back to the beginning of the current fiscal year. However, if you said to me that you would like to put all of 2019 in here, for example, then I would go back to the beginning of the fiscal year and enter everything that happened. That is really your choice what date you want to start with. I would actually try to make that date correspond with that bank statement. So if you decided, for example, that today you bought QuickBooks, and let's just say that it is November of 2019, I would try to go back to maybe the first or whatever date your bank statement cut off and make them correlate that way. You can still enter something prior to that date or after that date. It just needs a date to start with. Now what we see here is our income and expense accounts. What you'll see is a list of what is called the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts basically is a listing of all the buckets that you'd like your money to go into. So for example, when you look at this list, if you're going down the list and you say to yourself, you know, I have a lot of charitable contributions, you can click on that to turn that one on. Or maybe you don't have a lot of computer and internet expense, you can turn that one off. I usually suggest you just leave what it pulls up automatically and then we're actually going to get into the chart of accounts over in Module 3 and Section 3 and spend more time on it there. I'm going to click Next, and it's going to say, Congratulations, you've completed the Easy Step interview. Now, at this point, I would say that 80 to 85% of your company information is set up. We still have a little bit more, but let's go ahead and hit Go to Setup here. And then what you're going to see is a few little screens pop up that will give you some suggestions or like in this case, this is what they call a desktop usage and analytics study. I'm just going to hit continue past that. If you see this screen, it's asking you, first of all, would you like to add the people you do business with? Do you want to add your customers now, your vendors now? Do you want to add your products and services that you sell? And also, do you want to add your bank accounts? Let's just go ahead and say start working. We're going to set those up as we go along. You could have also clicked the X in the top right of that particular window. And you'll also get a new feature tour that will appear if you're new to QuickBooks. Now, these are nice to go through if you want to go through and see some of the new features. But if you don't want to, just click the X in the top right-hand corner, and that will close that window for you. You'll also notice that you will get these yellow helpful hints that appear around your screen. You can turn those off if you want. You'll notice they will just fade automatically if you don't do anything with them. And this is what we call your home screen right here. Now we're going to spend time in a little bit going through this home screen. Let's go ahead now and go over to section three and I'm going to take you into a feature called My Company and give you a quick overview of how it works. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free QuickBooks Pro 2020 introductory course, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this QuickBooks Pro 2020 playlist.